In today's competitive work environment, it's essential to stand out in your role to advance your career. One way to achieve this is using the right tools as part of your role. I'm going to take you through a number of tools that you can start using straight away. Broken down as organize and present yourself as a pro, have engaging meetings, make presentations that don't suck. You can organize and present yourself like a pro by using a productivity app called Notion. Notion has been one of my favorite apps I've been using quite a lot over the last year. I have actually created a work playbook Notion template you can download from my digital store. As you can see on your screens, this work playbook template has the following sections projects, tasks, my personal objectives dashboard, meetings with my stakeholder and meetings with my manager. When you click on projects, you will see this following dashboard where you can see the following status, not started, in progress, on hold, done and no longer required. What I love about this dashboard is it gives you a completion rate. So as you automatically add new tasks, as you label the status of those tasks, for example, not started, done or in progress, it will automatically give you the completion rate. When you click, for example, on task one, you can put a lot more information as to why that task, for example, hasn't started, what are the barriers, what are the challenges. So you could, in your updates with your manager or your team or your stakeholders, you could simply say, as part of this project one, that's in progress, I have completed 50% of the relevant tasks. And by the end of June, for example, I will have completed 100% of the relevant tasks, which will overall enable the successful delivery of this project. The following section is all about your tasks. So you can actually call this as your tasks dashboard. When you click on by projects, you will get to see all of the tasks you have to do by a particular project, what the status of those tasks is and what is the due date. You can also click on this week section and it's going to list you all of the tasks you have to complete that week. You can click on overall calendar as well and it's going to break down per month all of the tasks you have to do. And when you click on completing section is going to list all of the tasks you have completed, which projects they're linked to and their due date. I find that this is actually visually going to explain to your manager, to your team, to your stakeholders as to how much work you have to do and deliver, which is really great when it comes to assessing our own capacity before we simply commit to more work or more projects to do. The next section is my personal objectives dashboard. So most of us will have some annual objectives. We usually agree with our managers. We really shouldn't have more than five, in my opinion, and they can be quite specific and smart, measurable. We have to understand what's really expected of us to do and how we can actually break it down per month or quarterly activities in order to ensure we are actually achieving our objectives. This dashboard or as in board view really explains visually as to where you are with your objectives. So you can simply drag them from yet to do to in progress to complete. And as you move that, you can actually use this as a visual board when you speak to your line manager as to where you are with your objectives and progress against the same. And what's really cool about this bit, if you click, let's say, on objective one in this section here underneath, you can actually take lots of notes. You can attach various links. You can actually attach various documents to really explain as to where you are with this objective, any support you may need, or if things are actually changing Sometimes I do find we set out to do certain things for the next 12 months, but our workload and expectations often change. So I do suggest you proactively manage your objectives, how they're changing and how you are actually delivering against those to make sure there are no surprises down the line when we have to do those annual check-ins as to how was our performance over the last 12 months. The next two sections are meetings with my stakeholders and meetings with my manager. And this is really for those people who love to be super organized when it comes to managing meetings they have with their stakeholders in this particular example. I have included meetings etiquette and how to actually approach preparing for your meetings with stakeholders, what sort of questions to ask and suggested agenda you can actually use to put a bit more structure in place when you're actually engaging with your stakeholders. So what this dashboard will give you is a list of people you have to speak to on a regular basis, dates when you've spoken to those people, how you've spoken. Sometimes it is in person, over the phone or a virtual call. It's very important to list which department they're part of because you can use this for filtering later on and any actions you have agreed as part of that meeting and you can say actually as part of this meeting we've agreed a number of actions and I'm in progress I've completed those actions or I actually haven't started these actions just as yet and what's really good as well when you click on their names I have included suggested agenda as to what you can discuss in all of these meetings you can take lots of notes or maybe you take notes by hand and you can simply copy them into your template which will serve you as a great reminder 
agenda for your next meeting with the same stakeholder to refer to as to what you already talked about, actions you've agreed, and where you are with action delivery as well, which again, I believe is going to come across as really structured and organized and simply to keep a track of the conversations you have in one place. And the final section is meetings with my manager tracker, which again, I think is really important when it comes to proactively managing our managers upward. In my videos and my blogs, I often talk about how we can all and how we should all manage other people upward as opposed to they manage us all the time. I've included what you can do to prepare for your first meeting with your managers, especially if you're changing managers frequently or you're joining a new organization or you simply find actually I need to recontract and pause and reflect as to how I need to work with my manager going forward. And I have also included a suggested agenda you can actually have every time when you speak to your manager. So as you can see in each meeting you have with them, I do suggest you put the date and actions you have discussed and agreed to do in that meeting and the status of those so you can actually use it as a follow-up next time you meet with your manager. If you like this template, simply go to my digital store and download it and duplicate to your Notion workspace to use and adapt further. The next part is about how to have engaging meetings. Sometimes as part of our role, we have to set up a meeting, we have to facilitate a meeting, maybe it's a bit bigger meeting that's called a workshop or a session. And we often have to come up with really creative ways as to how we can have engaging, engaging sessions, whether they are in person or virtual. By the way, if you are setting up a meeting, always make sure there is a clear agenda, clear purpose, all participants understand as to what your meeting is all about, what you hope to get out of the meeting, what you will do with that information as part of your next steps and what they can also get out of your meeting. Meetings are not popular in any workplace, by the way, so we need to make sure they are quite engaging and everyone feels they're adding some value to their day or to their job or to their work life as to how they're going to benefit from our meeting. Sometimes as part of our meetings, we have to collaborate on certain initiatives and in order to do this, we may have to use a virtual or digital whiteboard. In order to have engaging meetings, I do suggest you explore using the following tools. Mentimeter, Slido, Kahoot for quizzes. In terms of whiteboard and for collaboration purposes, you can actually use Canva, Bitpaper, Myra, Figma. And if you're a Mac user as part of your role at work, you can also use Freeform. The next bit is about presentations and how to make sure our presentations don't suck and keep our audience engaged. As part of our roles, we may be asked from time to time to actually pull together a presentation and also present it to a group of people. Sometimes it could be a small group of people, sometimes it could be a larger group of people. There is no need to overthink any of this. The key questions we need to ask when someone is asking us to pull together a presentation is to understand the purpose of the topic, the purpose of the presentation, what the audience can achieve from our presentation on the day. If we are looking to assess as to how much time can I actually spend on each slide as a role, and as a suggestion, it really needs to be anywhere between 30 seconds to 60 seconds, no longer. People really have a very short attention span. As you know, people on average tend to lose concentration after six to eight minutes, which is often much shorter than our presentation. Many people are visual and visual learners. It's quite good to start thinking about what sort of visual can I actually include on my slide that will really convey my message. Storytelling as part of our presentations is very important. I often really try to understand any background to a particular topic I'm actually talking about. Has anything else already been done or delivered that I could simply refer to? There is often quite a lot of duplication in most workplaces and therefore there is no need to kind of reinvent any of the things. Subject to what tools our organizations give you to use as part of our roles, we are very likely to be using PowerPoint, Google Slides or Keynote if we happen to be a Mac user. If you don't want to create presentations from scratch, and simply want to get lots of ideas, I do suggest you use Canva. There is a presentation section. You can type in anything you like, anything you need, and it's going to give you suggested templates and suggested drafts that you can simply continue to tweak further. Whilst Canva can also give you lots of fantastic visuals you can incorporate into your presentations, there is another website called Flaticon, which I really love, and actually I use quite a lot as part of my videos and my thumbnails. That's it for this video. Let me know how you work and what tools you use as part of your roles. If you have like this video. There are many other similar ones on my channel. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.